The United Federation of Planets tends to prefer its prisons to be colonies, but they do have high security facilities and highly guarded ones, but these pale in comparison to Klingon prisons, the most infamous of which is the feared world of Aurora Penthe. It's referred to as the Aliens Graveyard, and a planet located in the Beta Penthe system sector 21166 of the Beta Quadrant. It falls under the Klingon Empire's jurisdiction, and while they do have other prison colonies installations all over their territory, this icy world is by far one of its harshest. This world has a breathable atmosphere and water, but its surface is considered inhospitable for humanoid life but not impossible, rendering it a class P planet. It orbits a couple of binary stars. Its surface is mostly rock and possibly oceans, however the entirety of the globe is covered in snowfall, meaning that from orbit it looks like an ice encrusted orb. It is constantly snowing either a light flurry if you are lucky, or downright arctic blizzard levels. During one such blizzard an exposed humanoid prisoner was thrown to the surface, and perished or at least was unconscious, in about 36 seconds. Considering hypothermia takes around 5 minutes with zero protection at minus 45 degrees celsius, Ruripenthe must be incredibly cold. And then again we don't know the health of the victim, so he could have been suffering for a time beforehand to simply make an impact on the new prisoners, the futility of escaping. Once admitted to Ruripenthe, you are not expected to leave. Well, it's not recorded when the Klingons first came to Ruripenthe or what drew them there, but the planet is host to dilithium deposits, so presumably they first penned the world as the site of a valuable resource. Considering its harsh environment and the surplus of enemies the early Klingon Empire had, well presumably the connection was made to utilise those captured enemies to mine for the Klingons. It was already being used as a penal colony by the mid 22nd century, where prisoners would be brought to the world and expected to mine the dilithium under supervision until they could no longer work. Now, the Klingons who worked at the prisons themselves were generally a surly lot, even by Klingon standards, and it seems that they were easily corrupted by years of the cynical work. It was common for wardens of Ruripenthe to accept bribes and host prisoners that were there for political reasons from rival houses. This is generally considered a dishonourable action, placing monetary gain over the life of another Klingon. They usually did not care about aliens, however, because of Klingon xenophobia. If a prisoner worked hard and well excavating the dilithium, well then apparently they were treated well. Presumably not being thrown to the surface was a degree of being treated well. If the number of prisoners grew too high, well then they would simply be deposited to the surface and left to freeze in the wastes. Because of the lethal climates, the prison facility itself was built into the mines and buried underground. Although the interior was guarded with walls, force fields and patrols and beasts, well the surface was absent of any fences or towers, quite simply because there was nowhere else to go, and the planet's natural magnetic fields created interference patterns that transporters could not cut through. Inside we have a single guarded entrance that descended into a waiting and processing area. Further in were quarters for the prisoners watched over by patrolled walkways and armed guards. Among the bunk beds and the open space were fires to stave off the biting cold. Well, it seems incredibly harsh that these fuelled fires would be the method used to heat the place, considering the age of environmentally controlled climates and further science fiction technology that Star Trek takes place in. But the low technological level persisted beyond the heating, as the mining was accomplished using only pickaxes and mining lasers, the latter of which were far outclassed by other mining methods. But the reasoning for this is twofold. Firstly, it keeps the advanced technology in the hands of the guards, and reduces the opportunities for inmates to jury-rig some tech. Secondly, it is a prison, and those here are actively being punished. Ruripenthe does have a sort of ecosystem. As a Class P world, it can support life that is adapted for its cold weather, just not most standard humanoids. There are numerous wild 
jackal mastiffs on the surface, which I talk about briefly on in my Targ bestiary video, but not much is known about these tusked mammals. They are adapted for cold biomes, and their white coloured fur provides great camouflage, but it's not clear if they evolved on Ruripenthe or another environment under the Klingon's sway and were brought here. However, they do make loyal guard dogs for the Klingons who patrol here, and are equally at home on its frigid surface. In fact, wild ones roam in packs and tend to linger nearby the entry or entrances to the mines, awaiting the frequent times when a prisoner is thrown to the surface to freeze, well then they have easy pickings. The reputation of Ruripenthe is well earned, as in all its centuries of operation, the average life expectancy of a prisoner is one year or less. People are only ever released with the go-ahead of someone high up on the Klingon Council, although there have been several successful escapes. Well, documented escapes, and those escapees had plot armour, such as Kirk, McCoy and Archer. If there were other escape attempts, well it's likely that they only made it as far as the surface before being given up for dead, if not perishing outright. If anyone did make it off the planet altogether, it's probable that the Klingons simply don't disclose that in order to keep the infamy of Ruripenthe alive. Plus, those who do escape probably don't want to advertise it because the Klingons do work with bounty hunters. So, thank you for watching this look into the planet Ruripenthe. Now I have you here, you can never leave. <laughs> Wait, the video's over? Well, Okay. Goodbye.